Hello, I'm Jim, and I want to tell you a little bit more about my favourite place in the whole of Shropshire, Brown Clee, or as it's more correctly called, Abdon Burf. Brown Clee is the name for the whole of this hill system, with Clee Burf at the other end. I will tell you the story of the hill in three parts. Let's start at the top of the old inclined plane that's now the road up to the telecommunications tower. We will start where it bends away from the long straight stretch. Mind the wagons. Had you stood here when the quarry was working, you had been in the way of one of the longest cable-driven railways in England. It took the crushed rock down to the railway line in Didden Priors, a single line of track with a loop of cable going round a massive drum, with wagons attached to each end of the wire cable. You can see the remains of the drum house in front of you. Here would have been the drum and brakes to stop and control the descent of the wagons. When the wagons at top were full, their weight pulled the empty ones back up the plain. Halfway down the mile and a half track, it divided into two, so the wagons could pass each other. It even went under two roads, using little bridges that are still there. It's said the quarrymen always left a loaded set of wagons at the top when they clocked off, so they could be pulled up to work in the morning. Better than walk up the hill, you can see. How noisy it must have been. Not like today when the only sound is the wind and bird song. Let's walk up to the buildings you can see and on the way and look to the left. The small building was the powder house where the explosives were kept. The skeletons of the buildings to the right housed the engines that worked the narrow gauge railway that ran around the quarry. Please be careful here. There are steep drops and dangerous paths. Now this roofless old building is a sanctuary for sheep, but once it shook with powerful machinery. Rock from the quarry came to the top of the plant in small trucks on a bridge from the embankment next to the building. It dropped into massive steam-powered crushers that turned it into the hard core that covers so much of this country's roads. More trucks then carried it on a narrow gauge railway to be loaded into the wagons on the inclined plain. The noise must have been amazing. If you turn round, look for the forlorn little fireplace. It's all that's left of the night watchman's hut. Let's walk up the road from here to the top of the hill and the toposcope. On the way, see how the quarry is flooded now. Are there any ducks on the lake? If there are, these are surely the highest ducks in Shropshire. What a view. Well, I hope it is for you. I've been here in the clouds, I've been swept by wind and rain, and I've been covered in snow. But on a clear day, you can see Snowdon to the west, Birmingham to the east, and the Malvern Hills to the south. What was it Houseman said? Oh yes, it's here on the toposcope. When Lock Edge was umbered, and bright was Abdon Burf and warm between them slumbered the smooth green miles of turf. You're now at the highest point in Shropshire. To the east there is no land higher until you reach the Urals in Russia. Now it's a quiet hill, still marred by the quarry workings and the telecommunications towers. But what has it been like in past times? Let's imagine and go back in time. Stone Age man was here, but he left little trace, and like the Bronze Age people, who 4,000 years ago built cairns on this hill. It was the Iron Age people who really altered the hill totally. They built a massive fort. It must have been a very powerful chieftain who could get his clan to build so vast a structure. If you look at all the other hills, everyone around you would have had a fort on them. The night sky would have been so different then with campfires to be seen on hilltops for miles. Then mining started. First in the Middle Ages with simple bell pits, just holes dug in the ground, and eventually the vast quarrying that has so carved this hill and changed its look. Now little can be seen of the workings of our ancient ancestors. I do hope you've enjoyed your walk to the top of the highest hill in the county. Why not try some of the other delightful walks that Shropshire has to offer?